Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Eric here. CRS and commentary here, reviewing Friday Night Smackdown ish. And uh, yeah, I saw that they did a 1 p.m. special start time, but that was way after I did the uh, that one hour thing that they posted, and then the premium live event. I'm like, you know what? Should have had it up before that because I didn't know they even had one. They, they was recapping stuff that I was like, well, that seemed boring as, as it was anyway. So let's get on into this one because I, I enjoyed this one. Uh, so, <clears throat> whew, same rules as the, the pay-per-view. So you know, I'll be trying to mute that best that I can if I have to call for something like that. So Cody makes his entrance, acknowledges the fans ringside in the cheap seats and people in the back. And he... he he knows he's going to be interrupted, so he gives an invitation to the bloodline. They come out, and Solo talks his trash and says, "It's not if not for Reigns, then he'd be champion." And I'm like, "Yes, no, maybe so." Cody gets into, or he goes into a litany of why someone deserves a match with him, and then and Solo's kind of like, "Yeah," and he goes, "I'm not talking to you. <laughs> I'm talking to Jacob Fatu," and the crowd kind of pops on that one. Then he and then. Cody tells Jacob to step up. I'm like, mm. I'm like, mm. Solo should be heavily offended by that by itself. Jacob, you know, he got a lot of gold in his mouth, you know. Um, he, need, he need to stay away from uh, cell block number 10. If anybody watches Ali Sadiq, uh, Jacob gets on the apron and then professes his loyalty to Solo and that gets booed from the crowd. And I'm like, y'all don't get it. He can't, he can't go or vie for the belt because then it would acknowledge him as a top contender and not a super mid-card guy. So he has to turn it down. It's, it's wrestling rules. It's just In general for pro wrestling, it's wrestling rules. So Solo sees Cody's ploy and calls it out, and that was the line for him. It's like, you know, cross the line. Solo declares that, you know, it's, it's time to fight. You know, you're trying to turn him against me. No, that ain't going to happen. So Bloodline enters the ring, and so does DIY and the Street Profits, who were just, you know, on standby for having to help Cody. Okay. Aldis, who is who teleports out there, tells them to stop unless they want some company trouble. He makes an eight-man tag team match for the main event, and it won't happen or anything of the sort beforehand. So I'll let you know there's not going to be any altercations between these eight people um, until the main event. And then he cites that next week, Solo and, well, Cody should vie for the belt. They should fight for that belt. And uh, he says he knows that the numbers game places Cody at a disadvantage. And so next week, is going to, the title match will be in a steel cage. And the crowd pops forward and whatnot. And I'm like, this, this, this sets things bad for Solo because, one, Solo ain't going to win. And if there is no interference, it's going to make Solo look really weak. So, yeah. I don't know about this, but WWE has been handling things more or less very well with the, the, the top stars. So I, it does make me curious. Um, I saw Tiffany and Pretty Deadly, and so I skipped that. And something else I wish I could skip. You can't skip it unless I turn it down, but I want to hear certain things. Commentary. Corey Graves. Michael Cole. It just sounds like one dude arguing with himself. At first, I, I didn't know. But what happened? Cody gave up, you know, welcome back Michael Cole to SmackDown. Okay. And I was like, what? He hasn't been there? That's, that's what I was thinking. He hasn't been there. I know Corey Graves and somebody else was there. Um, that I called Cole Jr. When I care to think about it. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. So who's there now? Because I thought it was Michael Cole. And then they started talking back and forth. But I'm lost in trying to watch the show. 
So without them showing them, I'm thinking, why is this dude talking to himself? And I think, okay, wait a minute. Okay, I hear it. I hear it. He's just altering his voice a little so it can sound like there's two people. It's not a really good one. And then they show him talking. I was like, crap. <laughs> Cedric gets home and I have her listen to it. Just doing, uh, it wasn't this match. It wasn't that. It was a, uh, no, it was a uh, Bailey. Yeah. And Tiffany was halfway through their match, which I'm finna go over. And I was like, just listen. And she's listening. And after about three exchanges of them, I, I pause. I say, that that was one that was that was I said that was two people talking. And she's like, "What?" I said, "Yeah, it's two different people talking." <laughs> oh. Okay, so next we got Bailey versus Tiffany Stratton. Uh, this match was going well, and then Nia Jax comes to the ring. Bailey hit uh, a dive on Jax, who stumbled back but didn't fall. Whew. Yawning, I don't know why. Tiffany hit a pendulum bomb, and that was for a two count, but she hit it well. I don't agree with that kick out. It's not for a belt or anything like that. So I'm like, you hit a move that big, that well. I mean, come on, there shouldn't be a kick out. Then Bailey hit a move she calls Rose Plant and got a three count. I can't see how that move is stronger than the pendulum bomb. And I'm basing this solely on the fact that these women are roughly the same size, so the comparison is clear. So I'm like that. That's just I'm like that don't make any sense. I I, I just didn't like that. I'm like, look, I know some of you out there love some Bailey, but WWE is trying to make me dislike this woman like a lot. You know, I mean, like they're trying to make me hate her. So, you know, when I say hate, I mean as in just strong dislike, not actual hate. I ain't got, I ain't got time for that. I'm, it takes too much energy to actually hate somebody. Um, in the back, A-Town insults Kevin Owens and talks about he and Cody not being friends since Kevin wasn't out there in the opening to help him. Waller has an Oilers title belt and for some reason beyond being in Edmonton, Canada. Owens insults them back, talks about their friendship, makes a triple threat match, snatches the belt from Waller, and leaves to go see Nick Aldis. And I'm like, y'all are a tag team. Y'all grown-ass men. It's two against one. And legitimately, see, I use this word very accurately, but they let him take that belt. They could have stopped them. They could have whooped them right then. They did nothing. They could have stopped them and chose not to. They let Kevin Owens deball them right there. That's a problem. That's a problem. So, next, we get a singles match. Giovanni Vici, Vinci versus uh, Apollo Cruz who's already in the ring, and I'm like, oh, here we go. <sighs> now, this Giovanni Vici, uh, or Vinci, I think it's Vinci. I thought she uh, would be two Cs, but anyway. Uh, they've been hyping him up. It's his return, and I've been annoyed by all the vignettes and him being super high class, well-dressed. He's like the this great athlete, and I'm like, I'm bored. Then he comes out in this, I ain't gonna lie, I, I thought it was a really tacky jumpsuit or whatnot. I was like, it's tight. It should, jumpsuits should not be tight. Sweatpants and shirts and stuff should not be tight. You know, that they, they shouldn't be. I'm like, ah. He gets to the ring, he gets in, he tries to pull a very poorly done uh, Tetsuya Naito. Cruz runs up, latches him into a crucifix, gets the pin. Match over that quick. Dude didn't even get his pants off. I was like, Cruz won. They let this man win. He can wrestle, per se. I mean, I know he can. I'm just saying, going on what I've seen of him, they don't let him do much except lose. So... I was I was like okay they 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 let this man 
literally spoil and ruin this dude's debut. Okay. So they're probably going to put them into a program so they can fight each other and Cruz gets humiliated or something like that. I don't know. Uh, we get a triple threat match here. Now we got Kevin Owens versus Grayson Waller and Austin Theory. Uh, short notes just to go through, but Owens power bombs Waller through a table. Then it's Owens versus Theory. Theory takes a DDT from Owens. Owens gets his stuff in and the swan time for a save two count by Waller. Theory hit the rolling blockbuster. Waller, Waller goes for the pin. Theory yanks him off. There's, an, there's a problem there. They try a double team superplex on Owens, but Owens fights him off. Owens hit a super steamroller on Theory for a save two count by Waller. Owens reverses a move up top to do his 180 Fisherman Buster for a save two count by Theory. Owens hits a stunner on Theory who bounced about six feet high and then was covered for the three count. A-Town beat down on Owens and remain a team. So, all right. That's how that go. LA Knight comes to the ring, talks up his two title defenses and how many people want a shot and... Then Carmelo Hayes, he comes out talking trash. He says he has two wins and thus he is next in line. And I had to note out that he's in the series with Andrade and they are two and two with Andre winning the first two. So Andrade comes out telling Carmelo to take it easy, tranquilo, reminding him he's beaten Hayes twice. He's like, nobody remember that. He's like, yeah, everybody remembers that. You know, they go back and forth. Andrade, Andrade claims he deserves the title shot more. Andrade goes into Espanol uh, with Knight saying, I, like, I don't know what you just said, but you need to check your tone. He's like, you don't know what I said. You don't know what I said. That ticks off Andrade who shoves Knight and then Hayes steps between both of them, Jaw Jack and Andrade. Then the, uh, they all fight with Andrade being shoved in the night, knocking him down before front kicking Hayes. Knight hits the snapmare driver on Andrade, and then Hayes jaw jacks Andrade. He's like, you look stupid. Look, that's what you get. You look stupid. Then he takes the same move from L.A. Knight, and L.A. Knight picks up his belt. like, man, both y'all stupid and just leave. So they're making um, L.A. Knight look really good. And I'm going to tell you this. If L.A. Knight did somehow magically get a chance and win that undisputed belt, that belt's going to be really over. Because L.A. Knight gets a higher pop for his intro than Cody does. L.A. Knight comes out and there's energy. You feel it. That's good. Cody don't necessarily have that level of Energy. I'm talking about moving and being all hype and stuff. No, it's a thing you feel when somebody walk out. Cody comes out in this very business-like. Even for his match introduction. It's very business-like. LA Knight walk out and it's like, here it is. I'm the man. This is the match. Things about to happen. There's a difference. Okay, so now we get to the eight-man tag team main event. Jacob Fatu, Tama Tonga, Tonga Loa, and Solo Stikoa, the bloodline versus the Street Profits and DIY. So I'm like, okay, how this going to go? How this going to go? And it went all right. I don't, I don't know what it is. I think, I think it's Champa that, I think Champa's the one that keeps trying to do things him and Ford, where they got to jump on people. I don't know what's up with that. Like, on the outside, just a, just a crowd of seagull people floating around something. But anyway, once all are um, out, the match jump starts with the bloodline losing the opening moments. Ciampa, um, or Champa, he was controlling the match. Jacob makes a blind tag, flattens him. Thus turning the title of the match. Solo goes nuts and sends Champa flying over the announce table. That went to a break with the bloodline standing tall. Uh, Champa fights for the hot tag as he fights the bloodline one by one until he leaves and tags Dawkins and um, Gargano. Why did I leave off that first G? It's just Argano. I don't know. Anyway, 
Uh, they, he tags him at the same time, so both are legal for this match at the moment. So that's just a bit that they did. But I want y'all to know something that that the way this was always settled in the past was if a, if someone tags two people at the same time during a match like this, their partner takes priority. That's how they always did it. So this was just them doing a bit. Then Champa suplexes Tama Tonga onto a crowd to, to, to a crowd of people, just everybody. Suplex him, everybody falls. Ford hits the Scorpio splash onto Tama Tonga. Fatu Senton saves the pin. Then Fatu just whoops the hell out of everybody. No tags, no nothing. It's just fighting. Fatu hits a vertical DDT on Ford before making the tag. Solo hits the spike on Ford. And then he sits him up, delivers another spike, gets the pin. Match over. Bloodline stands tall at the end. They advertise the cage match next week because, you know, Everything, I think all the WWE is moving to USA uh, again, because that's where they, when I first started watching uh, wrestling, I didn't know where it was. It was on, uh, I think it was Channel 22 at one point, regular channels, and then I think it came on Counter Force 40 a few times, then it was on USA Network. That's pretty much where it stayed forever when I was a kid. But that was WWF. In any case, that's going to do it. Hope you all enjoyed that. It's been Cedric for CR Wrestling Commentary for WWE Smackdown-ish, as I call it. And with that, I want y'all to be cool, be chill, be safe, so that I can see you next time.